In this video on my series on how to make a VR shooting range within Horizon Worlds, we're finally going to start working on the shooting range and its targets. We're going to learn how to build them and script them to interact in certain ways when we blast them. Stick around. Hi guys, my name is Tony and welcome back to Jackal Dude Gaming. Here, I like to have fun in VR, but I love helping you have fun there too. Now in the past four videos of the series, we've been primarily working on the blaster, as that is a key component in making this whole thing work. We made it look good, we had it shoot projectiles, and we gave it some other cool effects. Now we are finally going to start building and scripting the targets in which we will be shooting. I'm excited for this video because I'm going to go over events. I think events are crucially important to making a lot of things in Horizon Worlds because it's one of the best ways to get different scripted objects to talk to each other. And you're going to be utilizing it a lot when scripting things in Horizon Worlds. Now, if this series has been helping it out, give this video a thumbs up and think about subscribing and clicking that bell notification so you can know whenever I come out with a new series. This might be the last one of this series. I'm not sure. I'm not great at planning. But if it is, be sure that I will be coming out with more tutorials on Horizon Worlds. I'm kind of thinking of like a Thor's Hammer tutorial. Let me know what you think in the comments. Well, there's a lot to do today, so let's get started. Okay, here we are back in our blank world with our blaster and our rocks. Now I'm finally gonna get to work and build the actual shooting range where we'll be shooting our targets. Now to build the shooting range, I'm gonna be using a lot of the same techniques I showed you in the very first episodes of the series where we made our blaster. If you need a refresher on those, be sure to check out that video, but because I went already went over it, I am just going to do it really fast. So we're going to do a time lapse. And ta-da, here is a really quick makeshift shooting range. Now, I didn't mean for it to look like a bowling alley, but you know, here we are. Again, like, this is your creativity. Take your time, make it as cool or not as cool as you want. But here it is, and this will be good enough for what we want. So now we have a clear range, so nothing else can get hurt outside of this shooting range. But now that we have a place to actually shoot our blaster, shooting that wall is only gonna get fun, but for so long. So let's actually get started and make some targets. Now these targets are also not gonna be anything crazy special, but you're gonna know that they're targets. So let's just uh, speed through this really quick. Ta-da! A target. Now, we made a target, it's pretty big, and it still doesn't really do anything. It is still considered a static object, as you can tell that we still have our hit marker appearing on it. But we want this to react something, we want it to disappear or be destroyed when we shoot it. So, now we are going to write a script using events. Events are a great way to have scripted objects speak to each other. So, let's get that started. All right, we're gonna start by opening the properties panel of our object and we're gonna name it target. Again, you want to keep that uh, habit of naming your objects. It's gonna help you out later once you fill your world full of stuff. And so we're actually going to change motion to animated instead of motion. So when you change this tab from none to either animated or interactive, this now becomes an interactable object. That's gonna be important to remember when we get into our script. So before we even get into scripting the target, 
Let's look at the script of our projectile launcher, which is still all the way over here. So remember, if you remember, this is the projectile launcher script, the script that goes directly onto the projectile launcher gizmo in the front of our blaster. We are going to be adding to this script. So when projectile hits a static object, we moved a visual effect there and then played it. Now we want something else to happen when it hits an interactable object. And again, we're gonna go over to our events here. Under projectile events, we now see we have when projectile hits interactive object. So when a projectile hits an interactable object, what we're going to do is have it send that object an event. So we'll go back to events and we'll go under event actions, send event to object. Perfect. Now we can look at this kind of events script, send event, my event. So it's going to have a list of kind of default event names. We're going to make our own. Okay. So we're going to make a new event name and we're going to call it poof. Let's say, let's name it poof. And we don't want to send that to ourself because self in this case is the projectile launcher. We want to send it to the object we hit. So when projectile hits interactive, when we use this event line here, we get some information just like when it hits static object, like the position in the normal, but we also get back the object. So when our projectile hits an object, an interactive object, we will get what object that is. So just like we did with the position up here, we're going to take the object. We're going to put that under self. This is one of the few circumstances where we don't have to make a variable for the object. Literally us hitting the object with the projectile will give us the information of what object we are going to send this event to. That's pretty much it for this part, unless you still want to keep our hit marker. So if you still want the visual hit marker to play, when we hit that object, all you're going to do is copy these lines and then move a set of them down here. So now when we hit an interactive object, instead of a static object, we're still going to move our virtual effect to the position that we hit. We'll also change this, move this position over here, and then we'll, we'll play the visual effect when it gets there. Perfect. Now you could even make a new variable, use a different effect and maybe have a whole different effect that plays. Um, that's completely up to you. But for now, I want to keep the same visual effect and have that play when we hit an interactable object, just like when we hit a static object. Okay, that's it for the projectile launcher. Now we can go back over to our target and we are going to make it its own script. We'll grab our handy dandy script block. We're just going to name this script target because we know we want to put this on the target. Now remember, when we changed our projectile launcher script, when we hit this object with our projectile, we are going to be sending an event to it. That event doesn't mean anything yet. I like to think of events as like secret passwords. So let's say I told the target the secret password, poof. We're about to script that it does something when it hears the word poof, but technically, that projectile launcher is going to say poof to any other interactable object it hears. But if that interactable object isn't scripted in a way that it's going to do something, then it's almost like if you said poof to a random stranger, they're not going to know what you're talking about and they're going to think you're weird. We want this target to do something when it hears the event poof. So we're full start by going under events and under the events section when event is received. We don't have to worry about parameters yet, but under when event is received, we're going to find the event we made. It should be in this drop down. Yep. Right here. Poof. Now, whenever this gets hit by a projectile launcher, it's going to recognize the event. Poof. What do we want to happen? Well, this is where we get to play around with stuff that we couldn't before. So when we hit the target, we want to know we hit the target. One, we'll know by the hit marker, but two, let's make the target disappear go over to actions and we will set object visibility. 
and then we'll set object collidability. Which these are newer. These were both used to be under the tab hide. Now they separate it into two of them. So when it receives the word poof, we want to make these false. So we'll turn off the visibility and the collidability of the object to actively quote unquote destroy it. Uh, but let's make it a little more interesting. We called it poof, so let's make a poof. Uh, so we are going to use another visual effect or project uh, or particle effect gizmo. But let's make the variable for it right now since we're already here in the command prompt. So we will name this poof. Poof uh, VFX. And then we're going to make that an object. Blam, just like we've done before. So now we can keep adding things under to this poof event. So when we uh, when we receive the event, we also want to we're just going to say play poof because I think I want the gizmo we eventually use to be attached to this target. Play visual FX and then we'll put poof VFX. Wonderful. Now, the only thing is, if we're shooting targets with a bunch of our friends, we're going to want to keep doing that. So if we destroy this, quote unquote, we want it to come back eventually. So we can do that by sending an event to itself with a delay. It's kind of how you make a internal timer for your scripted object. So I'll show you what I mean. We'll go back to events and under event actions, we'll say, send event with delay and we'll put that under the poof so when it receives poof it will turn off its visibility it'll turn off its collidability and it'll play the poof animation to make it seem like we've destroyed this thing but we eventually want it to come back so we're going to make another event so when we say send event let's make a brand new event and we'll call this reset And remember, this event is only going to be sent to itself if it first receives the poof event. And we do want it to send this back to itself, but we want to do it after some time. So let's just say, I don't know, four seconds. This could be whatever you want it to be. Okay, now that we've made the poof event and we are sending the reset to itself, we want to identify what it's going to do when it receives reset from itself in four seconds. So just like we did before, we're going to go to the events. We're going to go to when event is received, plop that at the bottom. And remember in our dropdown menu, we want to find the event we just made called reset. Blam. Now we are going to re-enable the visibility and collidability. So we could just copy these, but just for uh, consistency, we will go in to pull them from the events tab. And now we're going to set visibility to true and collidability to true in four seconds after this happens. Okay, so that's pretty much the script being done, but we still need to make a variable for the poof. We need to make the particle effect for poof VFX and then assign that variable. So let's go do that now. Under gizmos, we'll take this particle effect out. It's already poof by default. Make it a little bit bigger. And then we're just going to place that here. Let's grab its properties panels first because we're going to group these objects together. So uh, we don't want it to plan start and we'll test this out. Eh, let's make it a little bit bigger. We let's test that out. Oof, a little big, but that's okay. I like it. How about that one? I'm being picky now. Yeah, that's good. All right. Now, what we want to do is group these objects together because unlike the hit marker VFX, we want this to always happen at the target. So let's make this one group the same way we do before, holding this, sliding through both of them, and then over here, moving our stick to the left. Blam, that's a group. Now, uh, so before what we did was kind of redundant in making the target object um, not a static object and turning it into an interactable object because now we need to do that with the whole group. So again, we are just going to switch that over to animated, 
bingo bingo that's done this is now an interactive object again and we will name this target And there's another reason why we wanted to group these together and I'll let you know in a little bit. So now we add our script target just like we've done before. And just like we've done before, we have a, it's asking for a variable. So we will assign that variable with this particle effect and drop that right here. Now everything seems to be set up. We'll double check our script. So when poof is received, we will turn off falsely turn the visibility and the collidability to false. We will play our effect that is grouped with our object, and we will then send the reset event to ourselves after four seconds. When we receive that reset after those four seconds, we will then turn our visibility and our collidability back on. Let's go test that out. So here we are, let's grab our blaster and blam, poof, it's gone in a few seconds. It's back! We did it! How easy was that to make our first interactable object when we shoot something at it? Amazing. Now, the great thing is we did all this work to make this object, right? So let's close these panels. So now what we can do is let's place him where we want him. Let's get a little bigger. So we'll place this one back here. And now, because this is all grouped together in a nice package, we can use our duplicate tool to make as many as these as we want. That will then have their own projectile. I'm sorry, that then that will then have their own particle effects. And because we assign those particle effects to each other, they will already be assigned just kind of make these sporadically and random <laughs> why not amazing now let's go check out to see if they all work the way they're supposed to we're here draw Bam. and they all start to come back you can literally make as many of these as you want now simply by copying them nice and there you are there's our shooting range and guess what? You can even go in and we could take that blaster we've worked so hard on and we can duplicate that. So now you have a shooting range that you can shoot at with your friends. And remember the way we set all of these up that the ownership of the objects will go to whoever picks it up. And we can literally shoot all of these blasters and they all work. That's what's so nice about scripting is that if you set everything up correctly and you want to use multiple of them, all you can do, all you have to do is copy them. Just double check and make sure all these copies work. And yeah, there we are. And there it is, guys. Our first VR shooting range, again, using some pretty simplistic coding. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to start working on other tutorials. I might even do a bonus episode on this one to see if I can turn it into a game. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Again, if this was helpful to you, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification if you want more, and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.